I'd like to welcome you to our event today entitled Experiences of the Revolution. My name is Kalina Kadash and I will be moderating today's discussion. Experiences of the Revolution. How was it? It was um, an emotional roller coaster while I was there, to be honest. It started off as peaceful, happy. Was it what you thought it would be? Well, we, were, we came into this very unexpected. I was there on the very first day of the first protest, and I was there from when it turned into, from being about uh, the Euromaidan and joining EU integration to when it became about human rights and human dignity and Vidstalku and the Kovacha. And so it was, um, it was quite an experience. I'll tell you that I went over um, to Ukraine to do a humanitarian aid group with Help Us Help the Children. I've been volunteering with them for eight years under the direction of Ruslana Jasnevska. And um, unfortunately, due to the level of corruption in Ukraine, our shoes were held up at the port of Odessa, by, um, which is now controlled by Yanukovych's sons, or was, I don't know who has it now. But, um, and at the time, we had three containers of shoes containing about 35,000 pairs of shoes in total. And they wanted us to bribe them $80,000 per container. Unfortunately, we lost a lot of volunteers. And this Sashko Kapinos, at 29 years old, was standing on the barricade and received a grenade to the head. Sashko was a volunteer with Help Us Help the Children. I spent the whole summer, this summer, in the Kampata with him. It's a good job you've done. You're a part of the organizing committee today for this? Yeah, uh, primarily Nestor Sinaiko, Alex Maslay, and, and uh, the people that are working from our organization. But yeah, we've. Uh, Hopefully going to pack the house today and uh, have some, uh, some good discussion. Now we're going to do another there are three speakers. One of them, Anastasia Mennik, is, is in Ukraine right now. Mm -hmm. right? So we're going to do this via Skype? It, we're doing actually two people via Skype. It's Anastasia and um, Mustafa from, uh, uh, he's actually one of the principals in uh, Hromadsky TV. Is he and, a member uh, of uh, Not yet, but no, he, he, he hopefully soon. Yeah, 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 he has like, to be Canadian first. Yeah, but no, uh, we're working on that. But uh, yeah, they're both going to give their perspective from their media roles and how really media helped to shape and change this whole, uh, this whole revolution. And it was all you know, very different experience from what I saw during the uh, Orange Revolution because that was something much more, I don't know, you could see you could see the different spirit there and people who went on the street, uh, they knew much more about politics because they, of course, they knew everything about the association agreement that was students, young professionals. And after the 30s, when Berkut, um, our special uh, forces, uh, written students, it was something that nobody could ever expect. I'm standing with Mark Marchik of, um, I guess, the chief cook and bottle washer of, uh, of uh, Lemon Bucket. Yeah. And now a lecturer. Eh? This, Apparently. Is, isn't that funny how things work themselves out? They how do. long were you on the Maidan? Uh, I was there for about a month. Um, from January 23rd to the 28th of February. I followed your, I followed all of your posts and everything on Facebook, and they were very informative. And it seems as if you were not so much overwhelmed as surprised at, at what was going on there and how organized it was. Uh, well, I was definitely overwhelmed. It's a, it's an overwhelming place uh, to be in, but I was really. Um, I was really shocked at the organization and, and um, you know, people that got together and um, uh, I guess in the, in the name of the fight for human rights, more so than the wanting to be either a part of Europe or not be a part of Russia, but people that generally got together and in any way that they could, whether it was standing guard or making sandwiches or uh, making art. Uh, you know, fighting against corrupt government. And I had to spend one night in the tent. So from about 3.30 to 6.30 in the morning, uh, my father is from Burshtiu, and I found a tent with people from Burshtiu, so I spent the night with them, three hours. I froze. This part of the body, you're near the piets, near the stove, you're sweating, your back is freezing. So. The next night I was in the med point in the hospital at the uh, October Palace, Jotnavi Palace. On January the 22nd, when three of our heroes died that day, I was on the rooftop with this, this crew from CNN, and they were able to get the footage when Berkut, along with the, with the militia, Rosromele, 
when they forced back our people, beat them, and the crew was able to document this from the seventh floor, which was unique because most of the footage that went around the world was from ground level. I was there in November from the 18th to December 10th, again from December 31st to January 10th, and then again from February 26th until March 2nd. Now, do you have plans to go back or are you waiting for things to settle a little? Um, I do have plans to go back, in probably the, sooner than later in the next month or so. To cave? To cave, yes. Wow, that's, uh, that's something. It's, it's marvelous that someone your age is, is, is getting involved. I mean, I, I find that this whole thing is just uniting Ukrainians. All over the world. It's yeah. the greatest thing. And every generation, every wave, everybody's coming together. And um, that was the one thing. And in my presentation this evening, I have a photo that shows on Maidan, there's a sign that says, Dziakuju Maidan should zjednau Ukrainsiu. And uh, it's birth of a nation, isn't it? It is. It was a look of uh, people that were, uh, that were ready to die. Uh, people that knew that this fight that uh, is happening is very, very difficult. We're completely outnumbered, completely outtrained, uh, have the worst geographical position, uh, and uh, have been in a situation where this oppression, it's not just this government, it's been, you know, political and, and economic oppression for decades. I lived in Lviv for a few years and I go back frequently and I've never seen something like this. So, Well, um, are your plans to go back soon? Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna head back in April and, and stick around for a while and um, continue, I guess, my correspondence and uh, trying to tell the stories of, of the ordinary people that are finding themselves in extraordinary circumstances. As you are this afternoon going to be telling your, exactly. your story from, uh, from there. A lot to tell, a lot to tell. Yeah. Are the band is doing well? The band's doing great. We're celebrating our, our four-year anniversary tonight at Lee's Palace, and we had a show as well last night. And I think somebody will get you a cake? There was a cake. Was there? It was great. Lemons all over it. Oh, dude. What is the, that? What's the significance there? Oh God, that's somebody going right outside. Lemons on the lemon bucket cake. Well, listen, all the best. Uh, keep up the great work. Keep up the great work for Ukraine. Keep up the great work musically because that's for Ukraine too. Of course. And uh, stay Ukrainian, my friend. And many times we, uh, we saw that uh, when brutal forces attack, uh, they use against media, and the media uh, was able to, 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 to stay there and to cover it, to show to other uh, uh, citizens of Ukraine to other uh, uh, citizens of Kyiv uh, what is going on and a lot of people came to Maidan and helped to those who were staying in Maidan and those who were attacked. So for me, media is rest of this revolution. Where do you think this is all headed? That is a very good question. Um, from what we've seen in the last week and, uh, and what we think will happen tomorrow, I don't think this is headed to get anywhere better. Um, seeing what Russia did with Lithuania yesterday in imposing sanctions and, and blockading a port uh, just means that they're testing the waters to see who is going to flinch first. And uh, I'm, I'm confident, optimistic about uh, not having a war, but it looks like it may not be able to be avoided. You know, at the risk of not being politically correct on television, they're idiots, aren't they? Uh, the people themselves aren't no. idiots, but I think there's a couple of idiots who are unfortunately running the show in the Kremlin. Um, and Mr. Putin has surrounded himself by people who don't belong in the power of anything, uh, let alone uh, one of the world's biggest nuclear arsenals. And so, yeah, I, I think those people need to be put in check uh, and we need to correct them very quickly. Do you think these sanctions that are being and perhaps will be imposed, will have any effect. Do you think Putin cares? Uh, I think he maybe not doesn't care directly, but I think the people around him do. They have very much invested in, in foreign, uh, foreign places, and uh, if they start losing that, then there may be an issue for him and, and, uh, and his friends. Mm -hmm.